Hello all you wonderful people and welcome back. Today I'm going to be working in Rooms of Wonder by Johanna Basford and I'm going to start on this mushroom page. I've been wanting to do this for so long but I've seen so many amazing versions of this so I've been a bit afraid that I'd accidentally kind of copy them without thinking about it. So I've tried my best today to pick colors that I don't think I've seen a lot of on this picture before I want to go back to my natural ones and I want to do some mixed mediums today so while I was sitting down this arrived on the doorstep so I was planning on originally using my Albrechtura but I want to use these three here the two greens and that yellow color of the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 so for the rest of it I am going to use um, Albrecht Dura by Faber Castell as well as Polychromos just over the top as well. So in this part one I'm thinking I'll see how much we can get covered with the sort of water-based mediums first. So the, not water-based, water-soluble mediums. So I want to test out these Caran little crayons, sort of wax-based crayons and they're all water-soluble and they're meant to be a really fast medium which is why I was really keen to try them out because I've never tried them out before so I'm hoping this will work so I'm just gonna lay it down just like roughly a bit of color and then we're just gonna go ahead afterwards and activate with water so I really wanted to go natural with this. I'm kind of thinking that these little mushrooms are in a little cave and I want to have like lots of like mossy kind of cave background. So that's why I thought going down with the green first would be a pretty good idea. So this is the chrome oxide green and I do have a similar color to that in my polychromos so that's one of the reasons why I thought I'd try out this one here. The other one is I think it's a little bit darker and it's more like an olivey kind of color so I'll be using that one later on for the darker areas. Now if you don't have the Neo Color 2 but you have Albrecht Dura or Polychromos you can of course use those instead. Go then with your earthy kind of green tones. The, the ones I was originally going to use were the um, Chrome Oxide, the uh, I think Permanent Green Olive and there was a darker one. I think it's a Chromium Green. I think it's Chromium Green and um, I would have used those if I was using polychromos, if I had my Albrecht Dura, I would have just sort of gone again with sort of similar color to that. So of course if you're using polychromos you're going to have to go in like I usually do with light layers and just keep layering on top. So that's kind of the reason why I'm using these colors instead because doing like a uh, water soluble base it will help sort of cover up some of that tooth of the paper which will allow you to get away with fewer layers when you come to adding your colored pencils so it does speed up the process a little bit which is really good sometimes when you're short of time
Now I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with the inside of these lanterns yet but I do want them to glow a little bit so I'm going to just test out this little it's like a golden yellowy kind of color it's sort of nearly on the brink of an orange but not quite so I'm going to put this down just sort of around these little jars there as you can see these jars are full of little stars and things so I'm definitely thinking that they're a bit of a light source so I'll add a lot of this yellow just in this sort of white area that I left out and I might also add them to some of those bottom little mushrooms maybe some of the ones on the sides as well just depending on how close they are to the jars I'm just going to go ahead now and change into the darker one so that is the dark olive and I'm gonna try to start mapping out my slightly dark areas so the further away from the light source that I am I want to have that darker so especially sort of around the edges of this circle I'm gonna go in darker also want to go in a little bit darker just sort of underneath each, each of these little stone shelves that the mushrooms are growing on as well so I'm just going to start layering down now and um, I'll probably end up doing a couple of layers of this we'll see how bright it is once I activate it on this paper I've only tried this on like a watercolor paper and obviously that works like beautifully because it soaks up just everything on the pigment so I'm re just really excited to test this out on the Johanna Basswood book because obviously the paper is a little bit different to a watercolor it's a bit smoother so uh, but I still think as long as you don't use too much water it should be not that different from using like your watercolor pencils and things and if you're using either polychromos or Albrecht Durer for this particular color I would go with I'm thinking the um, chromium green it's a little bit darker than the chrome oxide and it should darken things up really well do hope you are enjoying this video if you are i would love it if you take the time to hit that like button it really helps out my channel and make sure that other people just like you might come across this video and if you're new to this channel i would really love to have you subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I post new content. to start activating this so I'm just going to use my Pentel water brush to start with I've got my little paper towel close at hand because I will constantly be wiping off the um, the water just so I don't drown the paper so I'm just starting here at the yellow because it's the lighter areas and I'm just blending that out into the green
I'd like to ask you guys, in what order do you do or how do you approach a picture? Do you do everything in one area and then move on to the next area? Or do you do like I'm doing now, like a base layer down and then keep working over the top, which is what I kind of tend to do. I kind of do one layer over the whole thing and then the next layer over the whole thing. So please let me know in the comments below how you usually approach it, whether you like to finish one area before you move on to the next, or if you just go all over the place like I'm doing. So while that top part dries, I'm just going to go ahead and start on the bottom part, doing exactly the same, moving in with the same colours and just going to cover all of these little sort of backgrounds in between the mushrooms and um, just using the same green now, so the chrome oxide green and then again I will go on top with the dark olive afterwards. Thank you. 
as I mentioned at the start, I'm going to just add a little bit of this sort of yellow onto some of these mushrooms, just sort of roughly, and that will give me like a little bit of a highlighted area with the lights hitting, and then I'll add more color on top of that afterwards. As you can see I am constantly wiping off my paintbrush just making sure that I'm not flooding the paper because I don't want to warp it too much it will because it's not watercolor paper it will warp a little bit but if you're finding it warping too much you can potentially you can either once you're done you can shut your book and you can stack a whole a lot of other books on top of something heavy and it will help get your paper back down again or you can put a few pieces of paper in between and you can actually iron it just on very low and that will also help straighten out your paper.
so my top part has now completely dried I did leave it for about half an hour just to make sure he was completely dry you probably don't have to wait as long but make sure it's well and truly dry to the touch so I'm just going to be using this color now so the dark olive I'm not using the other green I'm just working now on uh, trying to darken up my darks so that I get those values in and it's gonna make it easier afterwards when I then try to darken up even further that I have all this sort of nice dark underlay underneath since I am testing out sort of new things I just wanted to see how this sort of paintbrush kind of worked with the Caran d'Ache Neo Color too so I've just got this little brush here I'm just gonna put a little bit of water I don't want to go too harsh in I just want to see how much water I need and from what I've heard is that you need just like a tiny little bit you don't want to again over wet the paper I think I'm going to need a little bit more than that though so I'm just wetting my brush a little bit more and then I'll just go ahead. I've also got like a really fine paintbrush as well and I'm going to go in and use that sort of in between the mushrooms to um, to darken this up. So I wanted to do just a normal paintbrush just because with the water brush sometimes you get so much water in so you're kind of diluting the color a little bit so i wanted to kind of prevent that and just make sure that i have some really nice dark green areas if you don't have normal paint brushes that's okay just use your water brush if that's what you're using and just be very careful that you're having having it sort of fairly dry so you could even just use your water brush as a paintbrush if you wanted to just add or you could just add a tiny little bit of water in the little compartment the water compartment because the more water you have in there the more pressure it's got to press down the water when you are painting with it we're using it to activate so the less water you have in there the less it'll actually come out at least that's what i've found with my little fine one is that the less water I have in the compartment the less water will then come out of the brush all at once so it just makes it a little bit easier to control
So I'm just going to go ahead now and get out my really, really fine fine tip here and so as you can see it's super fine so I'm just going to go in here in between I just needed a little bit more control than that bigger brush could give me so go in between I'm also wanting to test out how it works you know like with your watercolor pencils and like ink tents and things you can just put your brush straight like wet straight onto the tip and activate like that so this is what I'm going to just try now I'm just putting a little bit of water on the tip and I'm just going to put that straight down onto the paper I want to see how oh oh nice so that's literally just like pure pigment pigment being put down onto the paper so that's working a treat so that's another way you can use these ones here now I'm not too worried if I get a bit of green over the top of these little stems there I will go over them with maybe like some dark brown or something like that later on and the advantage with this is that you can reactivate the neo color too so um, they're like watercolors in that you can reactivate them not like the ink tents for example which once you have activated it it is permanent pretty much so um, you can go back in and just lift off pigment if you need a lighter area
So I'm definitely happy with how these base layers are turning out. I reckon they're going to make a really good foundation for the picture. And when I go over the top, then later on with my polychromos, I think it's going to make my job a whole lot easier. And we're going to finish this much quicker than what I usually would. So I'm thinking we'll probably be able to finish this picture in two videos, I think. So I'll just do what I can. As I said, I did have a little bit a little bit of time constraint today I need to get this done in about two hours so um, I'm just gonna make sure to see how far we get and then in the last one we're just gonna try to finish everything so hopefully we've made a nice start of it so that we can just sort of go in and fix up with a little bit of extra color add some shading and some details and then it should be really cool hopefully
So I'm just going to go ahead and finish off this bottom part in between these little mushrooms on the bottom here and then I reckon I'm going to put away this green for a while and I'm going to bring out my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils and I think we're going to get started on some of those little shelves or sort of call them shelves but obviously they're like little rock rock shelves or whatever it is like piece of the cave Alright, now there are six of these little shelves, three on each side, and I'm just going to show you these two. I'm going to do exactly the same on all of them. So I'm starting out here with this sort of dark grey, and I'm starting from the bottom, and I'm going to work my way up just a little bit. So this is sort of my darker area, and I'm going to lighten it up as higher up I come, but I do want this bottom to be sort of darkish, so we'll see how many layers we need but I'm just sort of going in with a grey and then we're going to use our brown tones and then we're going to finish up the top with a bit of green So I'm going to go in with my walnut brown. It's the darkest brown that I've got. Um, if you don't have walnut brown, you can use the burnt umber. That's another good one. Um, but I think the rest of them aren't as dark. Or if you have only have like a lighter one, you can maybe go in very gently with like a very thin fine layer of black underneath just to sort of darken things up a little bit. But I wouldn't go too crazy with that. Like work your way, build up the layers if you're going to use black.
just going to go ahead and activate this with my water brush. I'm going to start at the green layer and then work my way down into the dark areas. If you haven't already, once you finish this shelf here, you can go ahead and do exactly the same on the other four. So once we've done this, we're going to go down the bottom and just do that little bit. Now I want the very bottom to be quite dark, so I'm actually going to go in with a layer of black just along the sort of the circle outline here working my way just a tiny bit inwards and then we're going to go and sort of darken up um, the rest of it just using the walnut brown again.
Now as you're doing this, just make sure you wipe off your paintbrush in between each time you've touched that darker layer. You don't want to bring this into your greens because that will make it way too dark. So the higher up it is, the closer it is to the lanterns and the light. So I'm going to just make it lighter and lighter the closer to the mushrooms we get and then have that sort of nice dark edge just down the bottom here. doing now again I'm going to do on all six of these shelves I'm just showing you this one here so I'm just going in with my walnut brown as well as a little bit of that black just to sort of darken up the very bottom of these shelves because that's going to be where it's going to be the darkest so I just want to make sure that we have a nice contrast there it's just going to give us a better basic to work from like a better base when we bring out the polychromos So now that I've got the base layers uh, of the sort of green and brown tones where I want them to be, I'm going to go ahead and start on these mushrooms. So I'm using all of my earthy reds. So I have the Venetian red, I've got my India red. I've also, I brought in one little bit brighter, which is the dark red. 
and I've also got some um, burnt ochre in there that I'm going to use and I'm I'll probably go in with a little bit of greys and maybe some raw umber and things as well. So obviously I do have a smaller set of Albrechtura so I don't have the full 120 so if you do have the 120 set you could even bring in colors like your red violet would be really nice in there i'll probably bring those out in my polychromos and sort of play around but these are just the bases and then we're going to put colors on top of this later on <music>
so I was thinking of what I was going to do with these little leaves so I thought for some of these I'm actually going to bring out one of the other Karen Dash Neo Color ones so I found this little it's like a deep sort of orangey color it's called um, saffron so I thought I might use that with a bit of um, so it's this one here so sort of nice and dark and I'm going to use it like I did before I'm going to use my brush straight onto it and then I'm going to put a little bit onto these little leaves here of the top there are a few of these around on the page so as you can see I'm kind of just dabbing them down a little bit so I'm not going too crazy when I have that much pigment on but I'm just now that I've divided it around a little bit I can just sort of add it or not add it I can spread it out a little bit more and I'm going to do that to all of the leaves that look the same as these all over the page For all the little ivy leaves that are around, I'm just going to use the permanent green olive for all of those. So again, just go ahead and do this to all of the little ivies you can find around the page.
Thank you.
Now, because I don't think I've added too many of the brown kind of mushrooms, I'm going to go in with a bit of raw umber on some of these little ones here and just do some more kind of boring natural looking mushrooms. I am finding, I think, my Karandash crayon under here is a little bit too much. I will go back in there and just lift some of that up with my paintbrush in a bit but I'm just going to finish off these mushrooms first. As you can see down the very bottom of these stems here, um, the uh, the green is a little bit caked. I just hadn't activated it enough and blended it out too much. So I'm just going in now with the water brush. I'm just lifting off some of that pigment and I'm just wiping it off onto my paper towel. And as you can see, that looks a whole lot better. It doesn't have that cakey look anymore. So that's, of course, one of the advantages is that I can just go back in and I can lift up the colour if I want to.
for these the mushrooms here on this shelf I thought I'd just test out a little bit of like pre shading it so I'm just going in here with a, this dark brown and I'm just adding a little bit to the right hand side of each mushroom so the side that is furthest away from the light source I decided to doing it on these ones on the shelf just because they're a little bit larger than the other ones on the shelves so I thought they would work really well for it. just to practice a little bit more shading using the actual watercolor pencils rather than doing it with the polychromos afterwards
once again with the water brush I'm just going to work my way from the lighter area towards the dark area and just make sure that I sort of drag most of the pigment out towards the right because that's where I want my darkest area to be. Now I just want to apologize for the glary light that's coming in right about now. It was my uh, the sunshine just decided to come through the tiniest little gap in the curtain and I only just realized and I just had to put something in front because I couldn't shut the curtain enough. So I'm just getting a really glary shadow there just where that key is and it's just a little bit hard to see exactly what I'm doing. I'm just working really carefully because I didn't want to cover that key. I want that to be completely white and ready for um, my polychromos for later on. I just want it to really stand out and be much lighter than the mushroom. So again, I'm just sort of making sure that that dark area is to the right here and uh, just blending it a little bit. So I apologize for that silly light. I ended up putting a little box in front. So there we go. A little bit better there. And uh, now we can at least see properly again.
on my clock we have gone past two hours it'll probably be a little bit shorter than that on the video though so I'm just going to quickly finish off these little rocks here and then we'll in part two I'll just finish off the mushrooms down the bottom and then we're going to go ahead and do all of our polychromos detailed work So this is where we're up to. As you can see, it still looks, even though I've done a little bit of shading, it is still sort of fairly flattish. And that's what we're gonna really, really work on when we get our polychromos out in next episode. So I'm just gonna thank you all so much for watching along with me today. I'm so thankful that you're all here and I appreciate each and every one of you. So I wish you all a colourful day and I will see you again with part two next time.